for the most part, people don't understand drones. So when they do, they're comfortable with it. When they don't, they want to see it burn. And then when you go out and see it in real life, it's like, well, that's freaking cool as crap. Do you remember the scene from Star Wars with the, with the speeder bikes? Everybody watched that scene and you wanted to be on the speeder bikes. Flying FPV, that's the closest analogy to what that's like. go 100 miles an hour with a cinema camera. So you're basically flying a little Lamborghini. It is all manual. When we fly these things, every movement that you see is input or not input from the pilot. You get shaky, your hands are shaking, your heart is pounding. This is an adrenaline rush. Get ready for like the ride of your life. There's no other feeling like it. There's no other way to get that rush that you get when you're flying at PV. protest was held in February on the last day to submit comments. Let the FAA know why their proposal is problematic. So we do need things like remote ID and registration, but we need to do it in a way that is reasonable and fair to the community and to the technology. All the different types of drones get lumped into one bucket. Uh, we don't deliver packages, we fly these things for fun and sometimes for cinema. We're not flying anywhere where there is going to be a manned aircraft. We're below the treetops most of the time. Uh, because I, I, I think they read a proposal that doesn't take into account their concerns uh, and is not realistic for the kinds of technology they use. And we'll go back to Washington as many times as it takes to make sure that the world actually knows that first off we exist and that what we do is worth saving. I see the need for regulation to make sure people have to stay safe, but over-regulation is going to stifle any amount of innovation. Other countries are going to take off and run with this technology, and American innovation is going to die. The entire drone industry grew out of hobbyists. There was a whole group of FPV moms with their 13-year-old kids that were into this hobby. People from all over the country coming here to save their access to hobby flight. It may not end today. This may just be the beginning. We're going to protect our access to the sky, and we're going to do it together as one community. Being able to fly is such an amazing experience. And my goal is to help everybody who wants that amazing transcendent experience be able to get through the obstacle course and be able to enjoy the hobby. People send me things occasionally. This is a sign that a local guy made for me with my slogan on it. That's kind of cool. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something. So let's go over the parts that are gonna go into this build. We're gonna start with the frame. No, there's plenty of room there to, oh, yes. You gotta solve problems like this and you just gotta love it. So I build these drones on a regular basis and have been for the last six years. I've worked with government agencies and people in general that are trying to learn about drones and that you know are trying to understand more about what this technology is capable of. These two drones are the drones that I fly every day, all day. Like I use this drone for cinema work 
and I fly this drone freestyle. With these kinds of drones, I mean, most of them are custom built. It's extremely lightweight and also extremely durable. FPV drones, it's just like, it just fosters innovation and creativity. You know, in a bind, you can all, all just throw these ducks on and uh, do all the stuff a uh, squirt can in, in terms of being safe around people. This is like my first foray into carrying uh, things like a Blackmagic Pocket or a Komodo. The design is all driven by the needs of the, the pilots. There's just so much science you can learn through building a drone. We make the best pilots. We make the best innovators. You can't make this illegal without holding back the United States as a source of innovation. You never fly your last pack. So the minute you say, this is my last pack, then I'm going home, you're gonna lose your quad. It's gonna explode. <laughs>